Hello, this is Andrew, and welcome to Java Libraries Lesson 4. Today we'll be going over a quick view of how multiple windows work in JavaFX, as well as other ways of segmenting information. So let's start off with the basics of having multiple windows. Each JavaFX program contains a scene and a stage. Running multiple stages creates multiple windows. If you'll remember, each scene contains only one stage, so effectively it's a one a new scene is also a new window, but you have to create it as a stage. You can create a new window by using stage.show. As you can see here, we have two different windows created with two separate buttons, and we can just make them both appear by doing separate stage.shows with the different stages. Next, let's go over how manipulating windows works in JavaFX. So we have the simple set width, set height, which set the starting width and height for the window. We have set x and set y, which set the starting position. It's not exactly pixels, but you can think of it similar to such. Set resizable sets the ability for the user to resize the window. And site title sets the window's name. So if you see here, we have the same things we have on the slide. And you can see it creates two windows. Window 1 is at x1500 and y300. And window 2 is at x1000, y400. So you can see that the greater y of the second window spawns it further down because the way graphics works, this is up here is zero zero on the top left, and so it goes the higher the y, the lower it goes. So for example, we set this to five hundred and create new windows. Then you can see it creates it creates it lower. So limitations. While it is tempting to run wild with this concept, JavaFX does some pretty harsh restrictions on what you can do with multiple scenes and multiple stages. Nodes can only be used one at a time. So using one button cannot be in multiple scenes or stages. Neither can multiple layouts because those contain buttons. And if you do use multiple nodes or node multiple times, then you'll get this really long and annoying error. So when creating windows that look similar, you'll unfortunately likely have to copy a lot of code unless you create it smartly by using non-node classes and variables in order to make du effectively duplicating it much easier than simply copying and pasting the, all the text. Well, the individual nodes themselves cannot be used multiple times, there are workarounds that you can use to have the same effect. The easiest and most practical way is to use functions. So instead of creating an object in the main class and setting its attributes and then showing it, what we can do is we create a function that returns whatever node or stage or scene or whatever we want and it creates it in that function because then each time we call the function a duplicate will be created because that just reruns the code where we create it for example here we create every time we call the pop-up function we create a new window that has a random color and random position and this is just one example of course you can make a function that returns the identical thing every time. You can make a function that returns something formatted a specific way. Let's say you have a specific page layout you like, and you can make it so that you input what the page should say, and it spits out whatever node or window you want. And this doesn't just have to be used for multiple windows. You can be used any time you need to duplicate and have very similar looking nodes, and it's just good practice to make functions that create stuff. So we can see here, if we run it, we have our little window that says make window, and we can press it as many times as we want to make new pop-up windows with a random color. And so you can see we have, it creates a new stage, and then sets all the attributes of the stage we want, and creates a new pane still in the function, so every time you call the function again, it creates a new instance of this, gets our random color by doing some conversions, and then creates a new scene with the new pane, and then puts the new scene into the new stage and returns the stage. And then up here you see we have a pop-up button on when it's clicked, we call the function, and then all we do is tell it to show. Having it show like this will just tell JavaFX to run it, and we don't have to worry about it after that. So we could do other things. We could, let's say, have an input string have a string input where let's say we have a new button
something like that, where now, now if we wanted to, let's say, have each of these new windows say something unique, or have some our own thing, then we could easily do that. And we could also create multiple different functions for different attributes. And it's just a better way to make stuff that allows you to bypass the duplication limits in JavaFX and create something more robust. So JavaFX must pass data to stages or else the website wouldn't work. For example, if you wanted to enter like data from one scene, so like maybe the login page and you wanted to present on another scene, there must be a way for JavaFX to tr transport this data. And the way that they transport the data is not, um, they don't just transfer it. Like, like it doesn't go like call scene B cannot call objects from scene A. Instead, it saves it to a database, which scene B can access. And the database would be a sort of class which has properties. So for example, like the user class. So, in, so back to like the login example, perhaps you have like the class which has values such as name, like string name and string email. And it has um, methods which can set the name and get the name and set the email and get the email, which um, for so for example, scene A would use the methods like that sets the name and the email while scene B access it through the um, getter methods. Pagination is a thing in JavaFX where it's just um, how to navigate between multiple pages. So this is just some like keywords here. This is a page navigation area. This is a page indicator and this is a selected page indicator and it's the page label. These are all like different things, if you, make, if you know what I mean? So, um, but also it's important to note that JavaFX um, counts differently than normal humans count, just like every other um, language, coding language. So it starts at zero, except, but the pages are like, starts at one. So, you know, um, page two has an index of one and page three has an index of two and so on. So the way you import it is that you import JavaFX scene.control.pagnation and it has three properties, which like you can access or you can change through the methods, which uh, this provides. So you can change the page count, the current page index, and the match number, the max number of page indicators. And these might like sound like the same things, but just like look at the little picture here, right? So the page count is um, the max amount of pages, like period. So like just because there's only like 10, um, 10 page indicators showing right now, doesn't mean that there's only 10 page count, there's 10 of those. So there's a hundred, there's a hundred page count, but the max number of page indicators is 10 per like um, page. And then the current page index is just the page that you're currently in. So uh, in this picture, we are in page index three, just by on being page number two. And then there's this is like some code on to like how to um, change these methods. So you would, um, make the new pagination, just a new pagination uh, navigation area. And then you would set the page count to 21, set the current page index to three, which is page two. And then you would, uh, in this picture though, it would be the set max, max page indicator to 10. So next is the scroll bar. And this allows the user to scroll through the page. So, and the way you import it is the import javafx.scene.controller scroll bar, and the class provides methods. Um, the important ones are set orientation, set min, and set max. So, this is, this is a way that you create a new scroll bar, and the set orientation is to just set like there's like vertical and horizontal scroll bars, right? And there are just both both is important, but the way you set it is you do orientation dot vertical. And then the set min and set max is just the location of it. So since the scene is um, 200, so it goes from 0 to 200. So it spans the whole um, scene on the page. And it's important to know if, if you don't set any of these, the set orientation, set min, or set max, um, the scroll bar is just is horizontal automatically and does span the whole page in the middle. And automatically, um, see, I didn't set the like location of the scroll bar. It's just in the middle automatically. All right, thank you for listening.